video of Will Rock Studio East performances at 95willrock.com. Powered by the U.S. Army. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. Learn more about the U.S. Army at goarmy.com. Now, let's go live to the 95 Will Rock Studio East. What's going on? I'm Steno, and I have Shim with me today. Hello. Hello, Steno. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me, and thank you for the Burger King fries. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do product placement right now. She said not to give them advertising, but I got world's worst hangover, and I needed some Burger King fries. I'm glad that I could help you out on thank that. Thank you. How have you been since the last time I saw you? Uh, the last time I saw you actually was in Fort Myers. Uh, Re- like probably about four or five years ago. Really? Yeah, you were with the sick puppies. I think Tripolar. I was with who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Tripolar just came out. But regardless, I'm just happy to see you, okay? Me too. Thank you. I don't you. need any more of those puppies. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me back. Seriously, sure. thank you. Thank you. Um, so listen to this. One thing that, uh, you know, you're at the beginning of this, being a solo artist and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So how has that journey like been for you since you decided to go off on your own? Really weird. Really <laughs> weird. No, I'm serious. Like, I didn't want to... I've, I've said it in every time someone asks me. I didn't want to be a solo artist. I, I really did not have... Like, the band didn't split. And I, that's the thing. You can ask me whatever you want about the band. Like, I'm, I, I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to talk about it. That's my band. Like, I did that thing for a long time and had a lot of good songs with them. And there's a lot of fans that I think deserve, you know, some transparency. But I never wanted to do a solo thing. I know how to be in a band. I like... I don't like being by myself. I'm a little bitch about it. And... But finally, I was like, I'd, I'd done this, the Sick Puppies had split, I tried to do a couple of other things, and eventually it was like two years later and I hadn't put out any music, and I'm like, I gotta get something going on. And, I, and the only, the solo project was a choice that was made due to a lack of other options. Because I was like, if I don't do it myself, I'm, I'm not gonna put anything out. So I was like, I'm not gonna take that record deal's crappy offer, I'm not gonna take this crappy manager, I'm just gonna do it myself until the right things come up, and so I'm doing it. And you're doing a fantastic job. Um, I was reading an article about an interview that you were doing, and they basically said in the interview, they're like, so are you going to play some Sick Puppy songs? And you're like, you mean my songs? Yeah. And I was like, that was such a great answer well, for that. Well, it's true. I mean, who, I, well, yeah, like, I mean, my thing is, like, if I go and see the singer of one of my favorite bands, and he doesn't play any of the songs that I know, I'm going to be pissed. I get it. Yeah, I'd be upset. So like, yeah, I mean, I'll 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 play salsa music if that's what they want to hear. I don't care. I'm, I'm if someone. The truth is, I think that a lot of bands start to lose perspective. I know the Puppies did when we when we were in the bubble of touring. Um, that you forget how hard people actually have to work a day job at minimum wage, pay taxes pay their rent, pay for their kids, whatever they got to do, and a little bit of money they get left over, they pay for a ticket to your show, and then you're not going to play the songs they want to hear. Give me a break. Like, it's a bit indulgent. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. Well, speaking about playing songs, you got a guitar right behind uh, you there. So, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, we'll start with the puppy song, eh? Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is a puppy song that comes with a little story, if that's okay. Because um, we are... Uh, let me just get this right. Yeah. During Tripolar, we went to a, uh, a veterans hospital, right? And we went in, I had my guitar and stuff, and, uh, but most of the people that were there, they wanted to you know, get pictures and talk and stuff. And uh, eventually, just towards the end, we went to this one room. There was one guy in a bed. And he had, well, why am I feeding back? You can turn me down, mate. You can turn me down. I'm telling my story. I'm telling my story. You broke the cycle. Here we go. Ready? We're good. I got me. Thank you. There's this one guy in this bed. Uh, cables coming all out of him. And his mother was sitting there next to him knitting. And uh, half of his head was missing. It had been blown off in Afghanistan. And she sat there and she was knitting and she said, he hasn't responded for two months hasn't responded for two months. He just kept saying over and over again. And, uh, and I said, well, you know, does he like music? And she said, yeah, she, he used to listen to the radio all the time. And I said, well, he might know this song. But the problem was that all the people down the hall were getting ready to go to bed. So I had to figure out how to play this song as quietly as I could. So I just sat there and stared at the floor, stared at my guitar, and just tried to make it up on the spot so I could create some type of connection with this guy. And it sounded, it sounded like this. here and I will reflect you 
Both of us basically unattached to anything or anyone Unless we're pretending You live your life in your head Some call it imagination I'd rather focus instead on anything except what I'm feeling fantastic um yeah thank you so much wow that was like in the story that goes with it i mean it's really heartfelt uh this new single Mm -hmm. switch gears a little bit (laughs) (laughs) right switch gears a little bit um this new single came out a couple weeks ago right oh no no no. the single's Uh, been out for a couple months yeah about months that's what i meant um so it's kind of like i think it's like a new way to reintroduce yourself to the world and whatnot Mm. is that what you would say like well, like I mean, here well, I am. Number one, it's a song, so that's always a good way to reintroduce yourself to the world. But um, no, the Hallelujah, which I'll play. How many songs do you want? You want two or three? As many as your heart well, desires. Well, I'm going to do ten then. <laughs> um, <laughs> three but, would be great. But uh, we'll do. I'll do. I'll do one of the. The album got finished just a little while ago, so I, I'll do Hallelujah at the end uh, and play another song that has got a, a lot of meaning for me. Um, but the reason that. Hallelujah happened is because it was the first song that I wrote after I decided to be a solo artist. So it goes back to that conversation we were having just a minute ago, where when I finally decided to stop being a little bitch about it and say, all right, I'm gonna make a solo record. And I I went to Guitar Center and I bought uh, a bunch of gear and returned it 44 days later and started making my record. 
and hallelujah was I just was like, all right, I've got to write something to get this energy out. And uh, the thing that I realized when people started asking me about the song, they were like, what's it about? I said, I don't know. I just wrote it in one night on the fly to get some energy out. It doesn't really have a specific meaning. But then when, when I had to think about it because people are asking me about the single, they were like, well, what's it about? And I think, I think when I'm looking back to it, it was like, look, I'm going to be a solo artist. I don't know what the hell is going to happen. I know I've got a whole bunch of fans out there that love the stuff I did with Sick Puppies. So can I get an amen? You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's really sure. that sort of thing. Like, are you, are you going to be, are you coming back? Will you come back around? Will you pay attention to this music if I make it? And I didn't realize that was what I was writing until people started asking me about it. Well, we're paying attention to it for sure. And we've been playing it. We love it. Uh, we love you as an artist. And I heard that you had a production aspect on the album as well. Is that true? Did you uh, yeah, dive I into yeah, that? I produced it. You produced that the would whole be thing? The yeah, aspect. there you go. Yeah. So, how was that, like doing production? Uh, you d have you done that with Sick Puppies before? I learned a lot about production uh, when, when we made the first Puppies record. I watched a lot the, what the producers did. On the second Puppies record, I started to do a lot of the stuff myself. Uh, not like I would basically sit there with the producer or the engineer and I'd say, show me how you're doing that. And then I'd say, okay, give me the computer for half an hour. I'm going to try to, I'm going to put my vocals together. I'm going to, I'm going to record my guitars and do all that sort of stuff. And then I started sleeping in the vocal booth uh, for Tripolar for the two months that we made that record. Two months to make a record, Jesus. Um, I slept in the vocal booth so that I could stay and work with the engineers after the producer would go home and I'd, I'd keep comping vocals and I'd keep doing, you know, all of the production stuff. So that if and when the time came when I was going to produce another band, I thought, you know, maybe I'll be one of those guys later on that produces another band, you know, after, after I've done my rock star thing. And I didn't think I was going to produce myself, but it got to the point where having those tools actually was very beneficial because I was able to finish my music instead of having to go to people. Because the reason, like I said, I went to a few people to work and, and the, the circumstances were bad. So I said, well, I don't, I don't tolerate bad circumstances anymore in my life. So I'm not going to work with you. And now what do I do? I've got to do it myself. It's the best way to get things done, getting yeah. things done on your own, right? Yeah. <laughs> you want to play another song for us? I do, I do. Let me just tune this up real quick. You, wanna, you can riff for a second while I try to get this thing in tune. Are we live? We are live. We're live so I'm wasting time. While it's I okay. No worries about it. <laughs> By the way, we have a show with uh, Shim yeah, from... Sick puppies Tell tonight. Tell about that while I tune this baby up. Yeah. Uh, at Casey's Cabin, we'll be there with Pop Evil. It's an acoustic night tonight, so if you want to check out... Obviously, we're having an acoustic session right here, but uh, you can check out Shim and Pop Evil tonight at Casey's Cabin. It's going to be a good time. I'll definitely be there. I'm doing my show live from there, so maybe you can join me during some of my show later on today, too, and hang out. I think we need to do as much together today as humanly possible. Yes, let's I actually, do it. I'm, I think I'm going to try to... I may, I may try to work out a cover today because you guys have asked me to play a lot a lot of songs tonight yeah and i was you know that that chris cornell cover of um billy jean i do i think i'm gonna try to pull that out that'd be awesome i think i'm gonna try to so i'm gonna see if i can even <laughs> sing it and then if i can sing it I'll, I'll, I'll see if i can do that tonight i do a segment on my show called under the covers so mm -hmm. i play a cover song every day so i could totally use that okay we're gonna record <laughs> we'll record it and okay. I'll, I'll get it to you okay cool <laughs> So this next one, this is a song off my record that's coming out, ooh, September 14. It's coming out September 14. We just announced the actual date. Thank you, yeah, yeah, clap, we got, well, yeah, clap. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, long time in the making, and when I was halfway through making this record, I had a version of the record. Uh, it's not the version that's gonna be released on September 14. And I listened to the record from top to bottom, and I said, I feel like it's missing a song. And I thought about it, and I thought, it, it's missing that song that's like every band has a song that is just a great song regardless of circumstances, topic, genre. You know, uh, Green Day's got Good Riddance. Goo Goo Dolls had Iris. These songs that you just go, oh, it's one of those songs, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, I wish I could. But maybe, maybe in 10 years I'll be able to have enough experience and knowledge to write one of those songs. And in the moment that I said that, I just heard this song in my head. And it was really, uh, it was one of these songs that was kind of given to me because I didn't, it was, like, it was like a little song angel came and sat down next to me and, and said, here's the puzzle and there's the picture of the puzzle right above it. Just put it together. And all the pieces are right there. And it's this song that was so clearly 
for everyone to listen to. It, had not, it doesn't have anything to do with me. It's a song that they were like, people need to hear this song for some reason, so do you want to be the guy that sings it? And I was like, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> I dig it. So this is a song called Fearless. A wise man once said to me, be yourself because everyone else is taken. Yeah, they're already taken. He looked me up and down and said, my boy, you'll come around to what I'm saying. You've already made it. You were born to be fearless, born to be here, yeah, born and become. So you're already someone. You were born to keep fighting, born to keep rising, born and become. So you're already somebody. You're already somebody. If you don't move forward, you're moving back. And if you think too much, you can't react to the moment for what you've been chosen. You can try to hide behind the times that's tough. Cause you know you can't fall down if you don't get up. But that's crazy. And you're just wasting time. Cause you were born to be Born to be here, yeah, born and become So you're already someone You were born to keep fighting Born to keep rising Born and become So you're already somebody You can call the pain a compromise And envy other people's lives forever But you're already The odds are stacked Or blame the world for where you're at If the cycle's stuck And you need something to change it Then you better make it Jim from formerly of the Sick Puppies, now his own new man, <laughs> uh, hanging out in Studio East, all thanks to the U.S. Army. And uh, I am Stino. I've got a question for you. What is this this thing on the microphone here? This oh, little... Yeah, 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 right. so <laughs> looks this, like a sock puppet. Yeah. This is actually for you guys. This is your new station, Lil Shim. Okay? <laughs> so, I love it. Can I see gonna, it? Yeah, ready? Ready? It goes flying. <laughs> He's good for all sorts it of party tricks. It does say little shim on there. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna you're 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 gonna have a good time with him. Oh you my gosh. Hang him off your mic stand. Yes. You can do videos with him. You can do whatever you need. But yeah, he's your new. And and I want you to understand. There's a camera hidden in those eyes. I'm gonna be watching you. <laughs> he's coming to the show tonight, so yeah. he'll be with me rocking out. Yeah. That's that's what yeah. I'm gonna do. So that's your. That's I your love it. One. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Like I'm telling you, man. Thanks for playing the music. Of I, course. I, oh wait a minute. That's what I need. Oh sugar. What? I need someone to grab my guitar case. Oh. Because I got a capo in there that I need for the it, last I, song. I, I totally will. Booked. It's right in there in that room there. Oh, um, I have another question for you. Please. Let's I, questions. I heard about you maybe dabbling into acting. Well, uh, dabbling, I'm not sure if <laughs> dabbling is the right word. Uh, I actually started out acting when I was a kid. Okay. So the first, the first round of band equipment, the first bass amp, bass guitar, 
regular guitar drum set was I, I bought from money that I made doing uh, film and TV in Australia. Okay. So I was actually raised in the back of theaters when I was a kid. Um, so I learned about acting before. I learned about acting at the same time that I learned the English language. So it was like a second language to me. So that thing where like, you know, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino, when they talk about this method acting thing, yeah. there's a whole language of how that stuff works that I learned just because that's where I would go after school. That's where my parents would be, because that's where they work. And, and so I'd learn about script analysis and character breakdown and the psychology of objectives and all this stuff. So then when it came time for like, oh, I'm, I'm 12, I think I'm gonna start acting. So I start, and I got into film and TV stuff and was making serious bank for a 12 year old kid. Like, really? I mean, like, like enough money to be able to buy an, like not like, you know, house money, yeah. but gear money. I could buy an amp, I could buy like a, a guitar and Emma's bass amp and you know, all that stuff. And then fund the first uh, two rounds of demos that got us a record deal and just kept f just throwing all the money. You know, I pretty much, I threw all my money into the band for about 10 years, you know, so that was what really kind of funded the whole thing. And then once the band started moving, I started, you know, fo I've obviously focused on, the, was able to say, okay, cool, now that we're moving, I'm gonna just switch, or like the plan was always to put down acting for a while and get into music. And then if the music thing didn't work out, go back to acting. So far it's been doing okay. Always good to have a backup plan. Yeah, right? yeah. But um, that's, so I, I mean, I did, a, I did a little movie called The Day that was like uh, the people who produced my records did a couple of movies. And so I was like, hey, can I be in your movie? And they went, yeah, sure. So I went and killed someone in their movie. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, check out. <laughs> uh, so now, speaking of bands, we are obviously, do you have a band that you tour with when, when you tour solo here? My band is the bomb. Okay. I have got the baddest band in rock and roll. Yeah. Right now, I'm telling you. I cherry picked all these guys from uh, LA. I basically went around to gigs and just watched players. And I kind of did the Dave Grohl thing when he was putting Foo Fighters together. He just saw a band and was like, that's I need my that rhythm guy. section. Yeah. yeah. And I had a really specific idea of what I wanted because I knew what my record sounded like and I also knew what I wanted the show to be like. And it had to be a significant evolution from Sick Puppies. There was a lot of stuff that I always wanted to do in the show for Sick Puppies that I couldn't do because we didn't have a second guitar player or whatever and all that sort of stuff. So. I was like, well, I'm gonna, I, I, it's my show now. I'm going to get a second guitar player. And he's going to cover all of the solos that I've played on the record because I don't want to deal with that. I'm not, I'm not proud. I, I, had to, I have to practice my solos a lot to get to that point. And so I was like, you, you just play them. I don't want to keep practicing them. I'm going to play the chords. <laughs> I'm going to Billy Joe my way through the whole set. And then I just want to run the crowd and do that sort of stuff. But the band that I picked was specifically to support the type of show that I want to do because every show comes with a money-back guarantee, which I think is important for people to know. Every shim show comes with a money back guarantee. Because if you don't feel better on the way out than you do on the way in, you really should get your money back. It goes back to that thing I was saying, where people are paying real hard earned money to come to this show. If, they, if I come to your house and fix your toilet and it breaks the next day, you're gonna ask for your money back. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so if you have heard my songs and you go, go to all the trouble to get dressed up and get pretty and come out to the show and then I suck, yeah, you can get your money back. But I know that it ain't gonna happen. So you can have the guarantee because it's, hopefully it's gonna help you get in the door. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm gonna hold you to it tonight. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it will, it will. Um, you wanna play a la one last song for us? I do, I do. Can you? Why don't you tell them about the show while I just tune this thing up real quick? Sure, yeah. Tonight, make sure you're out at Casey's Cabin in Spring Grove. We've got Shim, formerly of the Sick Puppies, now doing his own thing, along with Pop Evil, an acoustic evening. It's gonna be fantastic. There are tickets still available. You can go uh, to Casey's Cabin and just knock on the door there, basically, right? There's only a, 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 lim a limited amount of tickets left, but there still are some spots. Uh, it's going to be a rocking night tonight. I'm going to be doing my show live from there from 3 to 6 today as well. I think the doors are at 6 o'clock. Uh, am I right, Eddie? Yes, yes. You bet out of stuff to talk about now? Yeah, there I think we you're go. Out. Yeah, I can feel you winding <laughs> it down. All right, all right. So I'm going to try to sing this. i tell you the last thing I'll say about this song. It's a real hard song to sing. Every song that I've ever released is my first single. I don't know why, but it winds up being the hardest song that I've ever had to sing. You're Going Down was off Tripolar. That's, that's a hard song to sing. But then eventually they were like, hey, well, that's going to be your first single. So you better learn how to sing it. Every single night, like you do it on the record, you get a million chances to get it right. You do it live, you get one. So I was like, I, then you have to be, but the beautiful thing is that then you have to become the singer that can do it. So you have to become better. 
And then the same thing with the last puppies record and now the same thing with this one where I didn't think about it until I'd released the song and I was like, oh my God, I gotta become the singer that can sing this every day. It sounds like a lot of energy is needed. And on top of it, I'm hungover. <laughs> you look great. I get a little more guitar in this, a little more guitar. Yeah, a little less, here we go. Most of us don't think twice My little boy should've checked your ego A time to speak and a time to lie Most of us can't decide Do what you do to get what you need though It's a long way down So can I get an amen or an hallelujah? Lost or found Can I get an amen or an hallelujah? Can I get an amen or an hallelujah? The time to speak and the time to lie If you don't pick up right You'll make a hot mess and win your hand now The time to sleep and the time to Thank you. That's right, Shim in Studio East. All thanks to the US Army. Go on. Dot com. I am Steno. Thank you so much for coming in and hanging out with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you for having me on the show tonight, too. It's going to be real fun. Yeah, for sure. We're going to be hanging out all day, so you're stuck with me. Okay. Stuck in Steno's world, but we'll have fun. We're going to be at Casey's Cabin later on today. Good times with 95 Will Rock.